You're listening to a podcast from the Finnish Football Show. You're listening to the Finnish Football Show. I'm Mark Wilkshire, and today I'm joined by Keke Nuruvi. Hi, Keke. Hey. And by Rich Nelson. Hi, Rich. Moi. And the domestic football season in Finland has now paused for a few weeks as the men's national team, the Hupia, takes centre stage. The third edition of the Nations League is about to start with a breathtaking schedule of four day, four games in ten days. It's breathtaking for me, and I'm only participating in one live match, so I don't know how these players are going to feel. Um, but today, as you see, I'm joined by Rich and Keke, and we're going to talk through uh, the, the news of for who's been selected for the Finland squad, the upcoming opponents, which is Bosnia-Herzegovina, Montenegro, Romania, and then Bosnia-Herzegovina again. And we're going to also have a, a little look at the, the new kit that has just been launched and probably one or two other bits and pieces around the uh, around the Finland national team. There's the referee's whistle. I reckon we're ready to ready to kick off. And I think, chaps, we should start by by talking through the the Hukia squad. Um, how about if we just name if I if I go through and, and sort of name the players in the various parts of the field and after each after each section of the team you have some comments about who's in and, and maybe who's not made it this time. Um, I think there's probably no real surprises with the, the choice of goalkeepers. We've got Radetsky, Joronen, and Eriksson. That's um, yeah, that that three seems pretty settled now, doesn't it? I mean, um, that's uh, they're the they're the three who you would expect to be named, and and in they go. I mean, Saku Eriksson, who had such a fantastic final season in Sweden, he's he's at Dundee United now, and he's um, getting splinters in his backside, sitting on the bench, but. Um, but yeah, quality, quality goalie, and um, yeah, I, I imagine he's a he's a valuable member of the squad. So yeah, as you say, mate, no no surprises there. They do look lovely in their fetching new orange jerseys. But yeah, we'll uh, we'll discuss those later. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't planning to focus too much on the goalkeeper jerseys, but we can talk about that as well when time <laughs> when we get up to it. Um, you know, I like my goalies. Yes, Rich. Yeah, well, as I say, I mean, it's um, Hedetsky's now the captain in the uh, after the retirement of Tim Spav. So it's um, I think this three look about as nailed on as as a trio get now. I think um, Nicky Mayenpa, despite despite his sort of heroics for Venezia and Serie A this season, and um, Antti Jukola seem to have kind of I think now accepting the fact that like some of us, we age and and all that things change. You've you've come through, but this three seem to be. From what you can see from behind the scenes, the photos and the videos that have been shared, it looks like there are a three that are working quite nicely together. So I think this is going to be it now, pen, pending any, hopefully not any injuries. I think this will be it now for the next, certainly for the next couple of cycles of, uh, of qualifiers. In in defence, we've got Urunen, Jensen, Tenho, Sauli Weissenen, Leo Weissenen, O'Shaughnessy, Ivanov, Alho and Granlund. Obviously, we've talked before about how they, the defence has certainly evolved over the last over the last year with with a few notable retirements. But anyone in there that's uh, that stands out for you guys? I mean, um, it's 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 really nice to see uh, to see Jensen get another get another crack after after what happened to him at, at the last squad. You know, he um, what was it, Rich? He, was, did he break his nose or smashed his face in? Yeah, he uh, broke, his no <laughs> broke his nose the, the game after he got called up, but before he yeah. went off. And had to, uh, had to pull out. So it's nice to get him and um, see him get another another opportunity. Um, yeah, the Vison and Brothers, great to see them. Great to see Sauli back in fitness and, and back in the squad. And uh, and I've mentioned him before and he's... he's um, He's dropped in and out of the squad, and and but he's back in this time. Albin Granlund, I think. I think he's a he's a, a decent addition. I mean, um, just on that note, and, I, and I'm sure I've mentioned it before as well. But it's it's really interesting how how um, Rivet like 
sometimes these players drop out of the squad, but he's not he's not afraid to go back and call them back in. I think that's you know. So again, for the player, he knows that if if, if he misses out on a squad, that's not necessarily him done. You know, it's uh, there's still there's still a, a chance to get back in. So yeah, I'm pleased to see Alvin Granlund in there. But yeah, the um, the interesting bit will be uh, will be the the centre halves again, I guess. Yeah, I think um, Tenho has done well at Hoyko this season. Um, I think he's earned his place in the squad. But um, I mean, from the, from the last sort of in the last six months, slightly more in, into last autumn, you had uh, O'Shaughnessy, Vice, and, and even off playing as the three, and they're looking now quite settled. Um, yeah. The well, both Vicenans really now that they're now that they're fit. I think there was always the concern over the last three years or so is that. They didn't really have the best consistency in terms of fitness, but now that they're fit, playing, available, um, they're pretty pretty nailed on members of the squad. And it's nice that it, it, the, the sea change in, in losing Ariuri Doivio at the same time, um, but Riva had already started that ball rolling uh, towards the end of the, the uh, World Cup qualifiers. So that kind of transition's already taken place. Um, and we're going to it later with the fact that you know, these Nations League games, they do have bearing on the next round of Euro qualifiers as well. So so the fact that they've already had a few games now playing together as a unit, it, it, it bodes well that that transition has been managed so far pretty well. I think a year or so ago, if you'd have, if you'd have looked at the squad that's there now and you'd have seen the players that were missing and the players that are in place, you'd have been thinking, whoa, what's, what's happened? We've... You know, there must be some major injuries, and we're 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 looking weak. But from where, from looking looking back at, like you say, how it's transitioned, it it feels quite natural. It it, it they've got experience at this level. There there's there's youth in that in that back line, but they they're playing regularly for their clubs, and they're they're in these these national team squads regularly as well, and um, could be there for the next. Yeah, again, next next few cycles of competitions. Yeah, I don't think I don't think we've got anything to panic about. As Rich said, the guys have the guys have played well together. They they they're settled now. They they know what it's all about being in these international squads. And yeah, I think they're 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 solid enough. They're they're playing they're playing at decent levels with their clubs. They're getting minutes, and that's um, you know that's that's all you can hope for, isn't it? It's, I think it's similar in the mid, midfield as well, this this transition from some of the more experienced players. Um, obviously, Tim Sparv retired. Johnny Galco, Yoni Galco is still not in, in back in the squad after after moving to, to play in India. So the midfield lines up with Taylor, Soisalo, Kamara, Shula, Valakari, Lingman, Nisila, Niskanen and Lapalainen seems to be Lapalainen, sorry, seems to be there listed in the in the midfield and forwards section. But he's lined up, I think, in the uh, in with the in with the midfielders. So um, obviously, Soy Salo is um, is making noise by scoring goals in Latvia. Is it? Yeah, he's FC Riga. Um, but, but he was called into the squad in the previous. Um, the, the friendly games previously this year and same with Lingman as well but they're they're the sort of the newest recruits into the squad yeah I mean so he's he, he's a decent he's a decent footballer we spoke about him before he uh, he had he had a couple of games at, at Middlesbrough and uh, but he's he's and he's he went to a couple of clubs but he's really settled he seems to have really settled in in Riga and he's he he puts in some cracking performances for them, as you say, Mark. He was um, he was part of the Spanish training camp that, that I want to see, and um, and it was it was great to see him. Great to see him play live. He's um, yeah, he, he knows what he knows what he's doing with the football, and uh, yeah, it's 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 nice to see him get a chance in the in a in the you know men's squad, and hopefully hopefully he can show us what he can do. There's some there's some players in that in that midfield group that are, are kind of really performing at the moment as well, aren't they? Robert Taylor's having a good time out in Miami and Glenn Kamara's just, just come off, off the back of two two cup finals, one that he closely lost in the in the nations uh, in the Europa League and then winning the, the Scottish Cup final. Um so there there should be some confidence there. Yeah, Robin Lodd has been playing really well for Minnesota uh, again. And um 
Yeah, Lapalainen is probably more of a forward, isn't he? But he's um, he's coming back in. He he had I think he had some trouble with injuries about this time last year before the Euro squad, and um, and yeah, he's kind of playing himself back in quite nicely. And uh, and Thomas Lamb has in the last few squads has kind of reappeared. He had a pretty bad spell at uh, Nottingham Forest, and has gone to Sofia, which I think until yesterday were managed by Alan Pardew. But um, yeah, he's, he's left, isn't he? Yeah, he's left. But um, yeah, he seems to have got back in. I mean, he, he kind of, uh, at the sort of tail end of the Mixu era, was kind of coming in as a as a defensive midfielder. And I, I, I can't say I watch a lot of Bulgarian football, so I don't know. But um, I think if he's added some sort of progressive pass into his game, he might have a little bit more of a skill. I mean, he was very much a kind of stopper type as, as a youngster. But um, yeah, he's... he's been back in the squad. I think he played. Oh, he's definitely in the squad for the the France game that we all went to. And um, yeah, he's definitely as 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 Keke said, uh, Rive, he may leave players out, but he doesn't forget them because he had a good eighteen months to two years when he wasn't in a squad, and now he's sort of very much back on on the fringes at least. You're right about him being a, a more of a midfielder, but on this team, he's listed as a, one of the forwards. Mm. And, and they do this <laughs> yeah. in, with Finland teams. They list the, the midfield and forwards as one big lump of players. But I can see him lining up here. And if you go to the, the blog post for this episode, you'll see the, the Hukiad squad pictures of all of them. Uh, Lamb, Lord, Huki, Oh, Palo, Chalman and Force as the, as the six nominal forwards anyway um, i mean just sorry just just to have a have a chat about that midfielder like like you said mark you know glenn kamari's had he's had a fantastic season you know um rasmus schuller he's his season started well in in sweden he's he's been he's been getting man out of match performances and he, he scored last time out robert taylor as you said in miami he's got he's had two goals in two he really seems to have really seems to be coming along there he um it could be getting could be getting himself Lionel Messi as a teammate if you believe the uh, if you believe the rumours soon. But um, but yeah, I mean that I think that that midfield that's going to be that's going to be quite interesting how that how that lines up in 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 the coming games, especially the one on Saturday. But um, there's no there's no shortage of no shortage of talent there. I mean, you, you know, Valakari, what what a, what a player he is. It's it's going to be it's going to be really interesting. I think obviously we'll get on to talk about the fixtures, but I think. This um this game on Saturday, I, I think that Rivi Rivi will go for it. Do you know what I mean? So I think we can expect to see a, a, a an attacking lineup. And 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 from the midfield nine that are listed there, even um, you know they can't all start. So if you yeah. if you pick three three or four of that nine, you still leave yourself with some players that can come on and, and change make an it. impact. Yeah, yeah that's for it. Sure, for sure. What about the what about up front? Obviously. Um, Demo Buki banged another 10 or 11 goals in the Premier League this year in a, in a relegated Norwich side. Uh, I think we maybe talked last time about um, Joel Pochienpalo. Yep. Just can't stop, can't help himself but score goals in Turkey. Um, and, and they got relegated as well. Yeah. Mm. yeah, so they're, score, yeah. They're, they're scoring goals in a, in a struggling team. Let's, um, let's hope they're, they bring their shooting boots with them for this, this game as well. Uh, but I think I think that I think you know that's who you that's who you're going to see start a match at least on uh, on Saturday. I think I think he'll he'll plump with them too. And uh, and yeah, as you say, there's 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 other players to to come off the bench and and make an impact if needed. You know, Benjamin Chalman, mind... he's he's back in the squad. Sorry, I wouldn't say I wouldn't mind seeing Lud playing behind those two, but but kind of high up there because he you said before, Keke, he scores goals in in the US, um, but doesn't get so many opportunities for the national team. But he can do it. Yeah, I think um, I, I think he must he must be used differently. Do you know what I mean? He's mm. um, from his club side and, and to the, the hooky. Yeah, but yeah, he's he's like, he's your unlocker, isn't he, Robin Ludd? He's, he's the one to look for that killer pass to uh, to sort of get, yeah, get get the assists for, for Pukki and Poyampala. He's a bit like a sort of David Platt type. He, he makes a lot of kind of late runs into the box and Finishing the kind of loose ball or the rebound or the cutback yeah. and things like that. It's um, it's an impressive skill and and um, yeah, I mean he has played as a ten for Finland, but often kind of behind one. But um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see how they how they line up. I mean he's 
I mean, the form he's in, but then you could say that about several of the players, the form they're in, they don't deserve to sit on a bench. So, uh, yeah, but um, I mean, he, he he always plays well. But uh, yeah, it'd be nice to see him add a couple of goals. I'm, I'm going, as, as you know, we're going down on Saturday for the Bosnia-Herzegovina game. Myself and Lady Sutu have got tickets in the block just next to Pokio Skarre, um, slightly round towards the side of the of the pitch, but close enough that, you know, it's um, it's going to be lively. We're going to make a bit of noise. Uh, and I'm yeah. really, really looking forward to it. And then we're going out on the town afterwards. So if any of you listeners are in Helsinki on Saturday, if you're at the game, come and, come and say hi. And uh, if you're not at the game, well, we'll be in the town. I think Satu's got a mindset on Mummo Tunneli again, right in the centre of Helsinki. So we'll be dancing <laughs> with the with a group of people from the age of twenty five to seventy five, and that I, I fit right in the middle of that perfectly. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, I mean, then, um, go on, sorry, sorry, mate. I was just going to say, like, just we're talking about the players. I mean, um, I think for the for the midfield and, and forward line, I think most of us could could sort of pick pick the starters you know we could we could sort of see what that's going to happen as I said I think the real the real interesting bit sort of lies in lies in the defence and whether whether River goes with the sort of the wing back players that he's been he's been favouring recently or or yeah what, what happens you know he, he again said it before as I said he's not afraid to bring different players in and all that but he's also not afraid to mix it up with his formations either he's um, you know it, he, he's he's definitely not really rigid he, he's yeah, he's not afraid to 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 you know experiment and use different formations. So it's going to be interesting. It's nice to be excited about football. Yeah. And, and for me personally, <laughs> having watched AFC Wimbledon and Ashley Gore over the last six months, I haven't been excited about football for a very for, for what seems like an eternity. So I'm I'm well up well up for this on uh, on Saturday. Mark's enjoying this uh, Vegas Liga hiatus. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> could it last a bit longer? That would be lovely. Thanks. <laughs> Stop the count. Um, but but also we've got a new kit that we're going to be playing in, and um, I think we were we were all quite excited when the, the kit was launched a few years ago with the the dark blue sort of cross going down one side and across the chest, and and yet there were some questions about why is it dark blue? It's a bit odd. <laughs> And and then and then by the time they finally got round to playing the the Euros, that kit was was kind of almost a couple of years old, and the whole world went mad for it. Everyone at the at the Euros uh, loved it, and it got a lot of a lot of sort of mentions. And um, and they sold out. They couldn't they couldn't produce really I- enough kits. So I wasn't so surprised to see that the new kit is uh, is very similar this time. But now the the cross is in this more of a sort of Royal blue color rather than uh, rather than the the darker blue. But what what do you what do you guys think? You oh, you are sorry, kit Richard. perverts, so <laughs> yeah, definitely you're, are. you are. So yeah. your opinion counts much more than mine. Go, on, Rich. Yeah, well, um, as you say, I think it's it's weird that the one thing they like that that was probably certainly initially I'd say wrong, but looked at at the, at the previous shirt has been tweaked, and yet it, it doesn't look. As striking, I think it doesn't. I mean, it's, it's nice and the design's very similar. And I think you can tell when the players are wear when they've been doing their promo bits in the shirt it, that they have tweaked that like the there's like a shadow printing in yeah. it, so it doesn't. It's not like a plain shirt or anything. It's um, I guess it's, as we sort of joked about, it's like why would you change a winning formula? Um, I mean, I've I've heard some criticism that he looks exactly like the replica of the one that they brought out last year. That, when they that couldn't, is true, yeah. actually, because the, that replica they brought out didn't the cross didn't continue around yeah. the sleeve, and that yeah. put me off buying it because I thought, oh well, this is going to change soon anyway, and this is not quite right. So it doesn't, but that doesn't matter, does it? Like this is a different kit, so it can be how it yeah. wants to be. Yeah, and I, I mean, it, the main thing is, is as as we said, it, it'll look good on on the players and. It's, I mean, if this becomes, and, and we don't want to kind of get shoehorned into this position, but if this becomes almost sort of like a default Finland kit, whether they kind of tweak it in one way or another or whatever, but um, if, if they do something with it, that's fine. But I think we were kind of spoiled with the last one 
Uh, this one's it's, it's a nice kit, and I think if they brought this out for the Euros, no one would have complained. It would have mm. been great. But I think it's almost like coming. It's like the difficult second album, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, um, it is. And it's 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 a very nice functional sort of seven out of ten Finland kit. But you're following on one that's arguably an eight or nine out of ten. And um, and, and yet, yeah. like you say, it's not so different. So why is it? Mm. Why is it not? I think there is an element of it's not different enough. Um, You know, maybe it's just a bit of like, uh, okay, I see what you've done, but I don't know, what what else could they have done? You know, they've had to do something quite extreme to make it vastly different and still, you know, without changing it too much. Mm. I mean, for me, for me, me, Me Mark, you like, you've, um, you've hit the nail on the head because, you know, when the, when the, when the Euro kit came out, I was like, well, yeah, it's it's nice, but the cross looks black. Do you know what I mean? And and I have to admit that that kit really, really grew on me. I mean, and the way and when you when you actually get one and hold it in your hands, and because I did buy it, you know, you've seen me wear it. When you know when you get it and you hold it in your hands and you see the way that the cross lightens up to a to a lighter blue up by your chest and that, it, it's a fabulous kit. And then and then this one came out and I was like. Well, that's the blue it should have been in the first place. <laughs> but, um, but I don't but like yeah, it now. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, um, I, I think I'm going to struggle. I'm sorry, Palo Lito, if you're listening, but I think I'm going to struggle to part with 100 euros for a, for a jersey that's pretty much the same as the one I've already got. Well, then but, maybe that's uh, the point. Like People who've got the original one don't need a new one. And those of us that didn't get one last yeah, time can buy this, yeah. can buy this one. But I do kind of, I know they've had to, they've had to do something to update it, but I do kind of miss the way that the, um, that the stripe doesn't go across to the, doesn't go across to the sleeves. But, um, but yeah, as Rich said, it's going to look fantastic on the players and, um, and, you know, it, and it is that, that Royal Blue is, is beautiful and it's, um, yeah, and it, it's, it'll be, it, again, it'll become an iconic kit, I'm sure with the performances, but um, and the but real also uh, the, the away kit as well. This now that's time a beauty. Is much better than last time. Oh. You you lot liked it last time. I thought it looked like a bit of a boring golf shirt with a collar and a button, and and it was just dark blue. But this one is again, it's more like that royal blue going into darker, uh, and it's got this stylized sort of diamond shaped design on it, which has got like a well, like a stylized. It's meant to be a fir tree or a pine tree, yeah, or leaf, isn't yeah, it? yeah, or leaf, yeah, yeah, to signify the forests of of Finland. And um... I mean, the the release video was fantastic. You know, it was, um, and this is this is the the first Finland away kit. You can't say the first Finland kit because they obviously did a lot of research and thinking about the Euro jersey. But this is the first Finland away kit where it it's the thought has gone into how can we represent Finland within this shirt? And, you know, and you saw that with the release video with the, the, the guys and the girls running through the forest and, and all the talk about lakes and forests and all that. And, um, and yeah, as you said, Mark, you know, the, the, the imagery there on printed into the fabric is, is to represent those forests and, and, and look like fir tree or fir, fir leaves or whatever, or trees. But, but when you look sort of close up to it, it, it's it's got a bit of an owl feather look to it yeah, as well. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So as it well. it kind of I think it works on on both levels, and it's it is an absolute belter. So, Palolito, don't panic. You will be getting some of my cash, and it will be for the away jersey. <laughs> okay, well that's fair. That's fair enough. And uh, what what I'll do, I'll put the link to that launch video in the blog post as well. There's also a, a link there under a picture of, uh, of of some of the players sporting that those new shirts to finlandfootballstore.fi. This is the Palolitos International um, web shop. So, you know, if you're outside Finland, then it's in English. So you can navigate your way through there without the help of Google Translate. Well, what, what, sorry, Rich, I'm, I'm just chatting away like no one's business here. What do you think of the away kit, mate? No, I like it. I think, like, like you said, um, the, the fact that it's, it's bespoke. Um, yeah. It's it's just nice, and and I think I mean again I I did like the last one because of it. I liked the design of it. It wasn't very Finnish. I mean, the, it was darker blue with the gold and everything. I mean, it complemented the home kit, but as as a Finland kit, it, it wasn't really all that. But but yeah, no, this one this one's cracking, and you know I'll definitely be buying this one. I mean, I'll buy both. But, um, <laughs> may, maybe, but um, no, it's it's just nice that you know when when we come around to this time of year and. Um, you know, up until a couple of years ago, Finland kits were the most mundane 
catalogue team wear yeah. stuff that you get on a five-a-side kit in North Cheam. And now there is thought behind them. There's a design process in place. They're unique to Finland. And that's kind of shows the way that Finland has the improved. In pro- yeah. it, in, the profile has improved. And, uh, and you know, I mean, it's they're a long way behind. You know, but again... You know, the Euros showed the demand for these kits. And yes, a lot of it was kit collectors and that. They weren't necessarily Finland fans, but it was a great advert for Nike and a great advert yeah. for Finland. And and hopefully this kit, I mean, I imagine will last them probably the best part of 18 months or to the end of next year's Euro qualifiers at least. But yeah, I mean, it's a, a good chance to to really get on that stage again if they do well in the, the Nations League and, and then the qualifiers. I wonder how long is this kit supposed to last for? Because all the all the international tournaments are all to cock at the moment, aren't they? Because um, of the, the Euros being delayed and now the World yeah, Cup is... Th- th- this one will probably, I imagine they'll bring out another one prior to the next Euros. So you'll probably get the just under two years out of this. Because next Euros... <laughs> all things being equal should be <laughs> in summer 2024 yeah in, yeah, in germany makes sense, wouldn't it? yeah um, but i mean it's um when, when you're talking about you know the fact that we're actually getting a bespoke fiddle kit i mean um do you remember was it the last last round of kits or whatever um norway had that sort of icy blue mm. away kit to sort mm. of uh that nike produced to sort of represent them and i'm sat there thinking no way Come on! How come? How comes the marketing men are getting their heads together and get all the designers are getting it? Yeah, they're getting themselves a nice bespoke jersey. But yeah, our turn now, and it's an absolute cracker. So yes, well done is. to everyone involved. Um, let's have a let's let's move forward a little bit and talk about the the, the games that are coming up. So we we know our squad, we know our kit. Who are we playing against? And there's we we said there's four games, and and all all of this links to the table, links to the fixtures are all in the. Um, in the blog post, um, I've, I've sort of separated out Finland's games. Actually, the um, the UEFA.com slash UEFA Nations League website is quite good for sort of filtering down and finding your team's results or all of the results in the group. And I've I put all of that into the into the blog post as well. But we start with Saturday, the fourth of June, at home to Bosnia Herzegovina. That's my game. And then Tuesday, the 7th of June, at home to Montenegro. I think Mark H is heading down there with his dad. Um, and then Saturday, the 11th, Romania away. And then Tuesday, the 14th, Bosnia-Herzegovina away again. Um, I'm excited. So I, I can't wait to uh, <laughs> to get down there. I got the bug when, when I met up with you guys last year for the France game. And uh, Sato and I said at least once a year. We need to get down there, and uh, this was this was perfect. It's my it's my boys, Ollie's nineteenth birthday on Saturday. He couldn't give a monkey's about football, and I said to him, "All right, son, happy birthday! I'll take you out on Friday. We're going to the football on Saturday." Yeah. <laughs> and and he he doesn't mind. He doesn't care. Um, so we we've played Bosnia quite a lot. I'm sorry, Bosnia Herzegovina quite a lot lately, and. They they seem to be in a in a difficult a difficult spot. Mark Mark Hayden wrote reached out to uh, friends of the show at B A B I H uh, football on Twitter to get their um, input into this, and they didn't seem very positive. They're definitely in a sort of transition period, aren't they? You know what I mean. And yeah, I think, and yeah. What did what did what did Bosnian footy say? He, he pretty much said that, didn't he? Basically, this match could go either way, but Bosnia is right at the right at the bottom with his words, and the coach is struggling to say the least. If I had to predict a result, I'd say one 0 to Finland, which I would take. But I, I think with a with a noisy home crowd, hopefully a big big crowd there on Saturday. Based on how previous previous fixtures of you know how the team's doing and you know building on on last year, then you know I, I'm I'm hoping for a little bit more than that. I think I think our mate our mate Bosnian footy there is even though he's predicted a defeat has gone gone in there with uh, a bit a bit hopeful to be honest because yeah, um, yeah I, I think I, I honestly think you know 
we, we've got more than more than a one nil win in us in this in this game. I mean, as you said, Mark, we've we've played them. We're like best mates with this mob. We've played them. We've played them loads of times recently. And and I I was actually at the um, one of the one of the not so distant Bosnia away games, and um, we got smashed four one. And but Poyan Poyan Palo scored the sort of consolation. But um, yeah, the teams have the teams have changed, you know, since that day. And um, when we've gone sort of up the way, Bosnia have gone down the way. And uh, and yeah, the last time out, we 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 played them away and, and beat them three one. So um, you can see how sort of things have turned around. And yeah, I, I'd I'd be hopeful. I'd be hopeful for a decent victory on Saturday. And then we move on to Montenegro on Tuesday. Who, I mean, Finland are quite well well placed in the rankings compared to these two these two sides. I think we're in the fifties and. Bosnia Herzegovina in the 60s and Montenegro in the 80s. Thank you, Mark Hayton, for the uh, for the stats. Um, so we should be we should be looking for well, you'd like to think back to back wins with back to back home games as well. Well, I think that when you get to the the last Nations League, um, Finland got off to a flying start, didn't they? Was it four wins in the first four games? Um, obviously, the, the format was like or the, the the calendar was slightly different. So this time around four games in what eleven days. I mean that would be going into going into a large boat would be would be fantastic. But I think hitting the ground running is important here because Finland arguably on paper could be considered the favourites to top mm. this group. Um and I think um there's a website called We Love Global Football, who are quite well respected in terms of their um not quite predictions, but they they look and forecast likely results based on previous form and previous games, and, and they've got Finland winning this group. Um, it's going to be tight because these games always are, and and essentially the point of the Nations League is you've got four teams who are of a vaguely similar pedigree. Uh, you, it's not a qualification group where you've got seeds. You've literally got four teams who play roughly in the same division. Um, but I think coming out of this and and... And again, while we know Mon- uh, Bosnia fairly well, I think Montenegro is a little bit of a um, slightly more unknown qual- quantity. But I think um, I-, I don't doubt that the work's been done in preparation for them. And, and I mean, it's, this isn't a Finland thing to, to underestimate anyone from their position. Yeah, Bosnia Herzegovina were in the in the kind of group. Uh, oh, I, don't, I don't know how to remember, how to how to explain it now, but in the A groups last time yeah. mm. um and they got they got relegated so in theory they should be the stronger team but we know from from recent fixtures that, that you know they're having a tough time sorry keke no i was, I was just going to echo what rich said there about you know montenegro there's um you know not really a, a force of world football i don't know how much anyone sort of knows about them but um but having looked having looked through their squad i mean there's there's a couple of couple of players plying their trade in, in Spain. Um, but the one that really stands out for me, obviously I'll keep, keep we, well, we all keep a bit of an eye on Swedish football and, and Rasmus Schuller, what he's doing there at Jurgård. And well, he's Jurgård and teammate Saeed Haksabanovic is, um, is, yeah, he's, he's, he plays for the Montenegro national side and he, he'll be, he'll be one to watch that. That could be, um, could be an interesting battle between those two, those two club mates. Um, but yeah, it'd be uh, that that that'll be. He, he's not a bad player, and um, and yeah, that that would certainly be interesting if 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 Rade gets a start, and so does so does this guy. So yeah, should be. And, should and be I guess I guess with with Bosnia Herzegovina, they're they're without Edin Dzeko. They've got Miriam Pjanic, but there seems to be beef between him and well, the rest, or at least the supporters are not are not sort of favorable to him again thank you mark so it's not a happy it's not a happy ship and then we move on to romania and uh i've got a romanian friend giuliano and i asked him what were his thoughts about the game got some stunning insight that will blow even blow our our comments away don't really know i don't follow the team and i don't even know who plays in the (laughs) national team (laughs) <laughs> so, so okay. Thank, thanks very much. I need, yeah. some, I need some better Romanian friends. Um, I think we know that Yanis Hadji is um, he's kind of in in and around the squad. He's he's the young uh, son of uh, 
Romanian legend Georgie Haji. Um, but he's been injured. He's a Rangers kicker who you follow. Um, yes. But he's uh, he's been injured a lot lately. What if if he's available for Romania? What and we and he plays? What can we expect from him? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure he's been named in the squad to be honest. Oh, okay. But, um, okay. But yes, yeah, so due, due to his injury, expect but, too much then. yeah. But I mean, again, again, that would have been that have been interesting with Glenn Kamara going up against his club mate. But yeah, I think I think Yanis Adji will miss out. But um, but yeah, he's, he's a he's a decent enough player. So by the time the return fixture comes out, he um he, he might be one he might be mm. one to to sort of keep an eye on. But yeah, he's um yeah he can he can whack in a free kick. He's an attacking player as like his father. He's not quite. Maybe not quite up to the standards of his legendary dad, but no, yeah, we look, you know, if he's if he's fit by the time the return fixture comes around, we'll have to keep an eye on him. But um, yeah, the Romania, I mean, there's certainly, I said just when we were chatting off air, but they're certainly not the um, the side that everyone was so familiar with from the 90s. You know, um, we all, everyone should remember where they turned up at the World Cup and they'd all dyed their hair blonde and, and a lot except, of them were sort of... Except for Hadji. So you had 11, 11 <laughs> bleach blonde and then this one yeah. guy with his dark, yeah. his dark hair waving around. I mean, uh, a, lot of those, a lot of those players became sort of household names, especially for, mm. for us watching football in England, you know. I mean, um, there was a lot of them who graced, graced the Premier League throughout the 90s. Mm. But, um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're sort of... You've got one or two who play in Italy now... Um, yeah, and then there's 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 uh, there's one or two in sort of Turkey and around there, Poland. They're playing in the Polish leagues, but yeah, you know, they're not really not really many many household names in this current crop. I would have said. We finish we finish up on Tuesday the fourteenth away to Bosnia Herzegovina, and that's where you travelled to. Uh, was it last year or, or? Yeah, it was a couple of years ago actually, mate. And um, yeah, it was a fantastic trip. I mean, it's. Uh, Obviously, everybody everybody knows the the recent sort of history from the from the nineties with Bosnia, and it's um, when you get there to Sarajevo, the, that the evidence of that is everywhere. But what a fantastic place, fantastic people. We had um, we had a beautiful few days there, and um, yeah. So anyone who's travelling over there this time, I hope you have a cracking time and uh, and get a get a decent result there this time. But yeah, really, 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 Sarajevo, great city. And then we, um, I think. The game will be in Zenica again, which is, uh, if I'm correct, which is where the game was last time. Sort of bus ride out to uh, out to Zenica from uh, from Sarajevo there. But yeah, really, really cracking place, mate. I've got a question that was raised by Mark Hayton when I spoke to him earlier. Um, four games in ten days. Um, if we start to lose players to injury or or rotation or whatever, do we have the strength in depth? And you know we 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 talked a little bit about this today, but he was he was concerned that over over the course of all those four games, if we start to lose some of the key players, can we still go to Romania and and to Bosnia Herzegovina and and keep the performance levels up? Um, I, th- I think as we we've talked about before, the wing back. Bear in mind, we're, we're playing mostly wing backs these days. That seems to be the area where we're, we're probably our most vulnerable. Um, I think we're, we, say we, Rive has a, seems to have a habit of playing converted wingers there. I know Granland isn't necessarily that, but Alho is. Um, Hammerlein is not in the squad as he's settling into to Brazil. Reitel is suspended for the first two games. Is it two? I think first two games. Um, so, there's a potential there because again, you you know, you talk about fresh players, you know, these players have played in many cases long seasons in, in Europe. And I have a feeling that there might have to be some flexibility there around, you know, because Finland are quite well stocked a centre forward in that kind of attacking or progressive midfielder role. But I think as with width, I mean you're talking about uh, Niskanen, I mean, when he made his debut for Finland, he played as a wing back and got very much found out as great going forwards, dreadful on the back. And I think he got caught out by Wales in that game. So I think um, he's going to have to be careful how he rotates that position. I think I think the rest of the team, the spine of the team is still finding its feet, but I think it's fairly settled and, and you could probably get away with replacing one or two here and there just to freshen things up and, and and for a tactical reason, but I think that that kind of to get that width, and if you're looking at going into that third and fourth game, um, you're asking a lot of players like Alho, 
to get forward, to get back with, you know, for, for potentially 90 minutes at a time. And I think that's kind of where Finland's weakness will be in terms of freshness. And I mean, it's not I mean, Finland are not exactly blessed there at the best of times because uh, Urinen is there on the left. But I think I think on the right side, yeah, it's not not so good. And I think that is probably where and, and where you need that fresh legs because these are players who will be motoring down. So I think if you're looking at game game three and four of this period that's where Riva might need to be a bit more shrewd and, and where you might see a tactical change in order to protect those areas. And, and therefore, out of four games, what, what are you hoping for from the results? I mean, obviously hoping for four wins, but what do you think we should be happy with? I think come away with eight points. Um, eight points would be two wins, two draws. Um, don't lose. That, that, that's the main thing. But I think eight points would be good. Um, and would be a good sort of grounding for the rest of the group going into the last two games. Obviously, it depends on, on how the other results go, but I think um, eight points from four games would be a nice sort of solid base going forwards. Having played yeah. Bosnia, who are theoretically the, the strongest team, having dropped down from le- the A, a level, um, that would be, yeah, that would be going into those last two games, hopefully picking up two more two more wins, Keke. Yeah, I was just going to say exactly the same as Rich. I mean, um, I mean that suspension that Reitel has is from his red card. Is that from his red card against Bosnia in the last yeah. time out? Yeah. And then, as you said, the, the last time we played Bosnia and we turned them over 3-1, it was, it was a, 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 what was it, a 5-3-2 five, five, formation. As you said, like Hammer Linen and Reitel were the, were the wing backs. Both of those are not there. But um, I think that's what we can probably expect again and yeah that that sort of wing back position is is probably key but um but you know we we, t- we talked about Alvin Granland and he's been brought back into the squad for a reason and that 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 could be it you know what I mean so um so yeah it's uh but you know obviously that it, it's a lot of football in a short space of time but if you start getting a few points on the board you know if we can if we can win these home games then River might look to sort of change it up, freshen it up for the uh, for the later games. But yeah, eight 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 point. I said I said in the last show that I was going for twelve points. Yeah. Didn't I, uh, well, of course games. we're going but, uh, for twelve. Well, you know, points. the ever the ever the optimist. Um, you know, I, uh, I I like to like to keep it keep it keep it positive. But um, but yeah, eight points would be fantastic, wouldn't it? You know, like draw. You know, if we can get get draws away from home and win the two home games, that'd be that'd be decent. Yeah, Mark made the point also that, that these other teams, they're all fairly equal. They'll hopefully be taking points off of each other as yeah. well with wins or draws or whatever. So, so you know, we need to try and put a little bit of distance. <laughs> that said, you win this group, you go up into the A A League and then you've got some real big hitters. So it's a bit of a poison chalice as well. You look at yeah, I mean- Hungary playing... England, Italy, Germany—it's <laughs> terrifying. Yeah. Did you do you remember when? Um, do you remember when we uh, we spoke about how we how we keep keep drawing Bosnia? But do you remember when we when we spoke to uh, Lukas Radetzky and he was like, um, oh, I can't remember what it was for now, but they got we won something or they got beat, and it meant we had to play him again. He wasn't too. I don't think he'll be looking forward to this. He wasn't too enamoured with having to play him over and over again, was he? No, that's true. That's true. Um, So, we're going to be back probably after each game somehow. Some combination of the Finnish Football Show team will be back just to talk through the games. We'll get out hopefully some sort of 10, 15 minute just reviews of the games. Mark will write his match report to some degree and we'll package all that together and get that out whenever we can. It, it was really hectic um, last summer during the Euros and it's not going to be any less hectic over the next couple of weeks, I think, although perhaps fewer radio appearances in the UK to, uh, to get us up during the middle of the night. And then we'll be back in the middle of June with a longer show, looking forward to the Women's Euros uh, taking place in the UK. And you guys wanted to say just a little bit about the about the women's team. Yeah, the um, the the Helmet squad is going to be announced on on Thursday the 9th uh, by by the coach Anna Signal. And yes, yeah, preparations very much underway. They've got. Um, 
two matches lined up against the Netherlands and Japan before the three group games in July in Milton Keynes and beyond. Um, it's, yeah, it's very exciting. I think um, the, the profile of women's football keeps getting bigger. Uh, the tournaments keep getting more popular. And coming to England, you know, where we're in some cases anyway, the, the stadium are going to be quite big if you ignore um, the Man City training ground where some of the games are. But um, it's, I mean, it's just really exciting. I mean, the, the, the team qualified top of their group. And, you know, as we've talked about before, and we've, we've talked to a lot of the players who qualified uh, and, and ahead of this, that, you know, that there is an excitement. I mean, this is a really big, big step. And you know, it's nice to be back for the women's team at the top table. And I think that that interest in the women's game across the, the world generally, but, but to have three games against three good, very good quality teams in, in England in, in July is going to be massive. Yeah, it's, um, it's it's certainly going to be good. It's going to be going to be a lot of fun. I mean, I'm I'm really looking forward to it. Can't wait to get up there and, and cheer the girls on. I mean, um, so you said there, Rich, that the squad's going to be announced on the on the ninth, yeah? Yeah. Um, I mean, um, the uh, and a little bit of news we've got coming out of the coming out of the women's game is that poor old Amanda Rantanen broke her broke her wrist or damaged her wrist. I think it was. She's um, she's underwent surgery. She's had a little operation and. Um, she seems okay, but it's uh, it's it's pretty bad timing. I mean, I'm, you know, the the actual tournament isn't for a while, and I'm 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 sure she's nailed on to be named in that squad, even despite just going under the knife a couple of days ago. But um, but yeah, all the best to Amanda, and hopefully she's fighting fit for the for the time the uh, the games come around. Yeah, I think um, I, I, earlier this week, I think mean, they they were hoping that she'd be back in training within a fortnight, um, how that's affected her match sharpness and everything, we, we don't know. But uh, it would be a shame after her crucial goal against Scotland was yeah. the, one of the big catalysts for qualifying. Uh, and she's gone to Sweden and, and done really well. So, um, yeah, be fingers crossed. I mean, I think when, when people saw it, it looked bad. But, yeah, the, the initial news has been fairly promising anyway. Yeah, I mean, um, as you said, mate, you know, the, the women's game just goes from strength to strength. And uh, for anyone who hasn't hasn't noticed, there's um for those of for those of listeners who, who do read and understand Finnish, there's a there's a new book about the women's game just come out in Finland. I think what's it called? Nice than nice than Laia, is it? Mm, yeah. So yeah, that's uh, that's just been released. So um yeah, if that's if you you know you're interested in the women's game and how it's moving on and the and the history of it in Finland, get down to uh, wherever you, all good bookshops and pick yourself up a copy. All good bookshops in Finland, I suspect yeah. to start with. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, that's that's good. I, one one thing I just wanted to say in the, the these these Nations League games are being shown in Finland on Ule Gux Ule yep. Two, which is great. It's easy for everyone to watch. They're also being shown on Ule Arena. Um, and in the blog post, there's a link to the uh, UEFA website to a page called Where to Watch the the Nations League in Your Country. So yeah. it lists all the different all the different broadcasters. Big, you big changes in the UK. Um, all the rights to those games have moved from Sky to Premier Sports. Uh, yep. As of now. Yeah, these these games are on Premier Sports. Yeah. Okay, that's. Um... Yes, so they kicked off with the um, the, the finalissima on on Wednesday. That was the part this part um, part of this new deal. So okay. in the UK, I mean, this is an England English football show, but like England games are now on Channel Four. Some of the other home nation games are on different channels. But yeah, um, whereas all the European qualifiers and the Nations League games are on Sky, they're now on Premier Sports, which is another subscription you've got to buy unless you can find a stream. But um, yeah, it's it's, um, it's a fight pain. Oh, that's Quite interesting. Friendly. I didn't realise mm. that. So I'll have to have a word with my brother and see if he's got, an, got a subscription that I could... Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those kind of like... I mean, it's not obscure, but they, they kind of have a, a broad mix of, of football and, and have a sporting rights. They're kind of like one of these channels that seem, seem to hoover up what's available, but they've done well to get sort of big UEFA games involved so. yeah for sure okay you mentioned, well, it, that... you, mentioned it, you mentioned it there rich the um finalissima that you uh, mm. that you attended the other night but um there's uh 
there's there's a bit of a link in there. There's a it's it's got a bit of an impact onto us who, who follow Finland, doesn't it? In that it this is this is the the competition between the oh. Conmebol and UEFA. Yeah. And yeah. the winners of those competitions, and we we said there was a link because there was talk about those South American countries mm. coming into the Nations League. Yeah, I think it's it's been rumored and and, and as part of this kind of official unofficial link between the two confederations and, and politically it's kind of them aligning themselves to protect the world cup as it is and and the very because of course away from Comnibal have the biggest confederations in, in terms of like they have the copa america and we have the europe and that is a big money earner for them uh, not so much for uefa i mean they get most of the money from champions league but still there is a huge interest there because of a biennial world cup then put so much pressure on the calendar. Where are these other tournaments going to go? So the point of this game was to build, you know, the, the two confederations now share an office in London and they've had this game, but also part of it is rumoured. It's not been confirmed, but I think it's generally one of these kind of worst kept secret things is that by, but I think by the time they're looking at the next iteration of the Nations League, which will kick off probably in 24, 25, then there will be the 10 Comnibol teams will then parachute to in some way into the 55 teams Nation League. So you'll have Brazil, Argentina, Venezuela, Peru, Colombia and all that in with the wow. European sides. How that works logistically, I've no idea. Um, when you look at some of the, the big countries, so Argentina and Brazil, for example, most of their players play in Europe. It's not a big deal. But if you're looking at Paraguay, Bolivia, teams like yeah. that, they're not going to have that issue. So again, how, how does that work? I don't know, but um, it, it looks like it's going to be happening probably in the next round of Nations League. So in the run up to the 26 World Cup. Interesting stuff. Let's keep an eye on that. But before then, we've got four Nations League games in 10 days yep. to keep our eyes on. Um, I think, really, that just about wraps up this episode. Thanks to my co-hosts for joining me today rich goodbye it does KK. goodbye it does not come in mark hayton you were here in spirit goodbye away, away. <laughs> and listener thank you for listening until the next episode of finnish football show goodbye you've been listening to the finnish football show you can find us online at finnishfootballshow.com remember to subscribe to the show wherever you're listening or watching you can follow the Finnish Football Show page and group on Facebook and on Instagram. See the links in the episode description below. You can also connect with the four hosts on Twitter at Explore Finland, at FC Sormi, at Escape to Sormi, at Kekimulan. Links to the Finnish Football Show merch stores are also in the episode description.